everyone! So today I'm here to review the newest Mac collection for Spring Playland. It released April 15th online and April 17th in stores. The collection included six lipsticks, five lip glasses, four pigments, four chromographic pencils, and three casual colors. As you can guess by the name, the entire collection features a lot of bright, vivid, just really summery spring feeling colors. Basically think of a playland, think of like an amusement park, all the bright fun colors and lights and stuff that are there, that's what is featured in the collection. Obviously I will be reviewing what I picked up, so on we go! The lipsticks retailed for $15 US, $18 in Canada, and are 0.1 ounces each. All the lipsticks in the collection are limited edition. There is Red Balloon, which is described as a hot fuchsia, Sweet Experience, which is described as a bright pink, and Toying Around, which is a hot coral pink. All three lipsticks are an amplified finish. The lip glasses in the collection retailed for $15 US, $18 in Canada, and are 0.17 ounces each. Again, they are all limited edition. There is Carousel, which is described as a creamy pink, Live It Up, which is described as a creamy orange, Lots of Laughs, which is described as a creamy peach, and Pure Silliness, which is described as a creamy lilac. The four chromographic pencils in the collection are $16 US, $19 in Canada, and are 0.04 ounces each. All of the chromographic pencils are in the pro range, um, so technically they're available all time. You'll just have to get them either at a pro store or on the pro section of the MAC website. There's Black Black, which is described as a deepest black. Genuine Orange, which is a bright orange. High Def Cyan, which is a high def cyan. And Process Magenta, which is a matte magenta. The pigments in the collection retail for $21 US, $25 in Canada, and are 0.15 ounces each. I picked up Ever So Yellow, which is a soft yellow with pearl. It's said to be a matte, but it's not really at all because it does have that pearl to it. It is a limited edition shade. And Neo Orange, which is described as an intense neon salmon. It's described as a matte and it is a true matte. It's kind of a pain in the butt to deal with. And it is part of the Pro range. So I did previously own it. I purchased it years and years and years ago. But again, it's available at pro stores or on the pro section of the website. Getting more in depth with the products themselves, the Playland lipsticks, there was six of them featured in the collection. I picked up three. I passed on Head in the Clouds because I'm not really that big of a fan of a frost finish. I also passed on Happy Go Lucky. I came so close to getting it, but I swatched it next to Candy Yum Yum in the store and they are very, very similar. The only difference is Candy Yum Yum is a little bit cooler, a little bit darker, and they're obviously a different finish. And I meant to pick up Playland, the yellow lipstick in the collection, but the girl at the counter actually forgot to grab it out of their little understock for me, which, now that I think about it, is okay. I probably would have never layered it over another lipstick. It just would have been cool to say I own a yellow lipstick, but... Red Balloon is a bright, cool-toned pink. It applies creamy, smooth, evenly, and has a great opaque color payoff to it. It is an amplified finish, so the creaminess of it does feel hydrating while on your lips, but it doesn't really supply you with any hydration after the lipstick comes off. Sweet Experience is a light pink with yellow undertones. It does have an amplified finish, so it is creamy, it is smooth, it applies evenly, and it has an opaque color payoff. Again, because it is creamy, it does feel a little bit hydrating while on your lips, but it's neither really hydrating or drying. Toying Around is a bright coral, almost orange. I'm wearing it on my lips right now. Again, it is an amplified finish, so it's creamy, it's smooth, and has great opaque color payoff. I would say it definitely applies true to tube. Is that a saying? On average, all three lipsticks that I picked up lasted well over five hours before showing any noticeable wear. Moving on to the Playland lip glasses. The collection featured five limited edition. I picked up four. Walking into the store, I knew, I, I had it in my head, I knew that because of the formula, because it is so creamy and it is so milky, that they would settle into the fine lines of your lips. And I was okay with that, mostly because I know they were created with the intention of being layered over a lipstick, which kind of helps, but I knew how badly they would settle into the fine line. So I made sure to swatch them on the back of my hand. I really wanted to get Bright Side, the bright yellow lip gloss, but unfortunately, pretty much as soon as I swatched it on the back of my hand, it settled into the fine lines of the back of my hand almost instantly. The other ones, not so much, but I was really disappointed. I really wanted to get the yellow one, but oh well. 
Carousel is a light, cool toned pink with a milky, creamy finish. This lip gloss is thick. It's smooth, but it is semi-sheer when applied, and it does apply somewhat evenly. Of course, due to the creamy texture and consistency, it did settle into the fine lines of my lips. Live It Up is a light orange with a milky, creamy finish. Again, this lip gloss is thick, it's smooth, but it is semi-sheer, and it applies only somewhat evenly. Over time, it did settle into the fine lines of my lips. Lots of Laughs is a light, cool-toned pink with a creamy, glossy finish. This lip gloss is thick, smooth, applies somewhat sheer and only somewhat evenly. And again, over time, it settled into the fine lines of my lips. Are you noticing a pattern? Pure Silliness is a light, cool-toned pink to purple with a creamy, glossy finish. It's thick, it's smooth, it applied semi-sheer, and this one applied the just most awful unevenness of the four. And just like the rest, it did settle into the fine lines of my lips over time. And just a heads up for those of you who hate thick lip glosses, these ones do feel tacky while you're wearing them. They do apply somewhat sheer, and they do settle into the fine lines of your lips because of the creamy, milky texture consistency. So I'm pretty 99% sure they were made with the intention of wearing over top of a lipstick or pairing with something just not being worn on their own. There are four chromographic pencils featured in this collection. Like I said, they're all part of the Pro range, so they are available on the Pro section of the MAC website as well as Pro stores. Black Black is an intense blackest black with a satin finish. It's very pigmented, it's very long-lasting, it's smooth, and it works wonders on the waterline. And just a heads up, because the chromographic pencils are part of the Pro range, they're not really made in the mindset of consumers, so some colors may be safe on certain areas and other colors won't just because some people are sensitive to red pigments etc etc etc. So the black black chromographic pencil cannot be used in the lip area. Genuine Orange is a bright matte yellow toned orange. It has great color payoff, it applies smooth and easily. Again, just another great pencil. This one cannot be used in the eye area or on the waterline. High Def Cyan is a bright matte sky blue. It has great pigmentation, it's creamy, it's smooth, it applies easily and it lasts a long time. Just like like Genuine Orange, High Def Cyan cannot be used in the eye area or on the waterline. Process Magenta is a bright matte cool toned fuchsia. It has great pigmentation, great color payoff, it applies effortlessly, it's smooth, it's creamy, it's great, it's long lasting, just like the other four in the collection. Because of the red pigments, Process Magenta cannot be used on the eye area or on the waterline. On average, all four pencils wore well over eight hours before showing any noticeable wear. They're really great pencils and I highly recommend checking out Black Black. Like I said, it's in my top three eyeliners of all time. And just a heads up, they do tend to stain your skin a little bit, so just Keep that in mind wherever you're applying it. Moving on to the pigments, the collection featured four pigments in total, one of which being in the permanent range, two in the pro range, and one limited edition shade. I passed on Golden Olive because it is the permanent shade and I can get it at all times, so it's not really a big deal to me. I already owned Neo Orange, and by the sounds of reviews and past experience with Max true matte pigments, High Def Cyan just sounded like too much of a pain than it was worth. And again, it's also a pro product, so it is available in pro stores and on the pro section of the website. Ever So Yellow is a vibrant yellow with a frost finish. Applied dry, it has more of a satin finish to it. It can be rather loose and powdery when dry, and it's not as vibrant as when it's used wet. When it's applied wet, this pigment becomes way more intense and has more of a pearly frost finish to it. It's a lot more vibrant. In a whole, Ever So Yellow pigment works well whether you're using it dry, whether you're using it wet. It's a great all-around pigment. Neo Orange is a bright coral with warm undertones and a matte finish. It is a true matte and it is so difficult to deal with because of the dry, chalky consistency texture to it. Like most of MAC's matte pigments, especially this one, it is probably the most difficult matte pigment I've ever had the misfortune of dealing with. They're difficult to apply, they're difficult to blend, and a lot of the time they're even difficult to apply evenly enough that they're opaque and bright and just Oh, they're frustrating. Depending on what base you use, whether it be concealer, nothing at all, or a very sticky, creamy base like NYX's Jumbo Pencil in Milk, this pigment could last anywhere from two to seven hours before fading or becoming patchy or just 
Oh. Keeping in mind this pigment is much like the chromographic pencils because of the pigmentation used in them, this one, Neo Orange, isn't safe for the eye area. Overall, I really liked Playland as a collection. I like that they didn't try to focus on too many different categories. I like that it was mainly focused on just bright colors lips and kind of cheeks. The casual colors could be used on the lips and the cheeks, but overall I really like it. I would highly recommend checking out the lipsticks in the collection as well as the chromographic pencils, especially Black Black. It is fantastic. This collection is available for a limited time from Mac stores, Mac counters, and Mac online. Let me know your thoughts on the collection, whether it be colors you like, items you like, or what you have picked up from the collection in the comments below. As always, be sure to check out my blog for more details, photos, and swatches. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you like what you see to show your support. I hope you found this review, haul, video, Mac collection thing helpful, and I think that's it. So have a fantastic day, and thank you so much for watching.